the 12 Elder Gods, the Titans, so nicknamed by their father Uranus, not as a symbol of power, but as a symbol of betrayal, ruled over the entire universe and everything that was in it when the world was still young, bringing forth the Golden Age. However, those who would end up showing more dominion and activity would be the children of these Elder Gods, known as the Younger Titans, the New Order of Gods, or Titans of the Second Generation. The Potomai. The Potomai were 62 male beings and lesser deities of the rivers, born of Oceanus and his wife Tethys, depicted as elders and surrounded by plants and animals. They represented each river known by the ancient Greeks. The Oceanids, sisters of the Potomai, the Oceanids were nymphs of the ocean. There were more than 3,000 of them, representing small masses of fresh water, like fountains, ponds, and lakes. Crusa, conceived by Gaia and fathered by Oceanus, Crusa was born a freshwater nymph, endowed with great longevity, but cursed with mortality and thus doomed to someday die like all mortals do. She spent her days serving as a priestess in the temple of her mother Gaia. The Circopes Children of Thea and Oceanus, the Circopes were two mischievous spirits, nasty, cheating and lying brothers. Although their names are not known for sure, they wandered the world doing only mischief. One day, they came across Heracles, better known to the public as Hercules, trying to steal the hero's weapons. Heracles caught the twins, tied them to a rope and carried them on his shoulder. But when they saw his ass, they made fun of him till the hero, greatly amused, could not help but let them go. Helios, the sun. Helios was a fine god crowned with the sun's wreath. He drove a chariot pulled by solar balls across the sky every day to the ocean around the earth and returned east at night to take over from his sister, Selene, a daily task which they sometimes say was overtaken by Apollo, the beautiful Olympian god of light. Helios's son, Phaeton once tried to drive his cart and accidentally went off course, setting the entire earth on fire. Selene, the moon. Selene was depicted as a woman with great charm and attributes, having a pale face, clad in robes, wearing a crescent on her head, carrying a torch, and driving a silver chariot pulled by a yoke of white oxen. She was in charge of not leaving mortals in the dark when her brother Helios was hiding on the horizon. She had many consorts, the most famous being the shepherd Endymion, who asked the god Hypnos to allow him to sleep with his eyes open so he could see Selene every night for the rest of his life. Selene would later be replaced by the enchanting Olympian goddess Artemis. Eos the dawn. Eos opened the doors of heaven so Helios could drive his chariot through the sky every day. Just like her siblings, she was a charming being, 
crowned with a tiara and sprouting huge long wings with white bird feathers. Leto, the light of night and day. With her sister Asteria, Leto was venerated as the goddess of the light of the night, and alternatively, of the light of the day. She was a mother of the pretty twins, Apollo and Artemis. Asteria the Necromancer. Asteria was initially a goddess of the black night, the dark rites, and necromancy all thanks to the secrets that her mother Phoebe had taught her. Poor Asteria met her end when she caught the eye of Zeus, who then tried to rape her. She escaped and transformed herself into a quail, jumping into the sea, but she could not swim and so began to drown. When the sea gods saw this drowning quail, they transformed her into a floating island called Ortiga. It is not known if this was done in help or in punishment. However, this island was used to hide Leto from the wrath of Hera when she was due to give birth to Zeus's offspring. After that, the island was anchored to the seabed by the sea gods. Lelanto the Invisible. Lelanto was the titan of invisibility and of the subtle breezes of the wind. Not much is known about this titan, as he barely appears in myths. Astraos the Vague Astraos is represented as an astrological deity, and perhaps the least known titan in Greek mythology with no known features or attributes, and no myths surrounding him. Pallas the Wise Pallas was known as the Titan of Wisdom. He once had a strong, friendly relationship with Athena, the Olympian warrior goddess. Many other versions, but the most popular, is the story where Pallas tried to rape Athena, so she killed him, skinned him, and made a shield with his skin, and that was the end of Pallas. Perseus the Destroyer The fury of Perseus swept away everything that was put in front of him. He represented destruction, the force of the storms and the fury of the elements. Atlas, the one who endures. Atlas was the titan of strength and endurance, who was condemned by Zeus to forever hold the sky on his shoulders very close to the Garden of Hesperides. Atlas would later be turned into stone by Perseus when he showed him the head of Medusa, giving birth to the Atlas Mountains. Prometheus. Prometheus was the titan friend of the mortals, honored mainly for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to men for their use. Zeus would punish Prometheus for this by binding him to a rock for ages and creating Pandora, who would release all the plagues and evils to humanity. Epimetheus. Unlike Prometheus, who could see the future, Epimetheus saw with delay things that had already happened. Both were benefactors of humanity, however, while Prometheus was known for his ingenuity and intelligence, Epimetheus was careless and unwise. It was he who married Pandora. Menotius. Menotius was the titan of violent anger and rash actions a trait which he passed on to mankind. He fought on the side of the Elder Titans, and so was equally defeated and banished to Tartarus by Zeus.
Astria. Like her mother, Astria was the upholder of equality in the world of men and is represented as a winged goddess with a shining halo, carrying a torch and Zeus's rays. The Horai. The Horai were three goddesses of the seasons, the regular phases under which nature manifests itself. These were ministers of Zeus, kind and benevolent, bringing to gods and men many good and desirable things. The Moirai. The Moirai were three goddesses of fate who controlled all phases of life from birth, through life and finally to death. They wove the threads that describe the duration of each mortal's life. Zeus mated with Mnemosyne, the elder titanide and goddess of memory, nine times in a row, giving birth to the nine muses. The nine muses were goddesses responsible for artistic inspirations. They came down to earth to whisper ideas and inspire those mortals who invoked them. Each one of them is related to an artistic and knowledge branch. Calliope, the muse of eloquence, beauty, and epic or heroic poetry. Cleo, the muse of history. Ereto, the muse of lyrical loving poetry. Euterpe, the muse of the art of playing the flute. Melpomene, the muse of tragedy. Polyhymnia, the muse of sacred songs and sacred poetry. Thalia, the muse of comedy and oral poetry. Terpsichore, the muse of dance and choral poetry. And Urania, the muse of astronomy, didactic poetry, and the exact sciences. The six Olympians rose to be the greatest of all titans and gods, greater than the elder gods themselves. They would overthrow the elder gods in the famous war of the Titanomachy to gain dominion over the universe, becoming the new rulers of the universe. Thus behold the six Olympians. Hestia. Hestia was the goddess of the home and hearth the one who rarely left Olympus and never interfered in the disputes of gods and men. The first one to whom offerings were made at banquets, even before Zeus. She was the goddess who in order to maintain peace on Olympus, swore upon Zeus's head to always remain a virgin. Hera, known for her violent and vengeful nature, Hera was the goddess of marriage and the queen of the gods. She was initially a loving and merciful goddess who gradually turned bitter due to Zeus's incessant and outrageous infidelities. She turned her anger on Zeus's mistress and offspring, throwing some kind of twisted punishment at them whenever she could. Her most famous victim was the hero Heracles, whom she constantly punished till the end of his mortal days. Demeter. Demeter was the Greek goddess of agriculture, the life-giving cycle of life and death, the bearer of the seasons, who made the lands blossom during spring, summer and autumn, and left them barren during the cold winter. Hades. Hades was the god of the underworld, one of the big three, and the most reserved of all the male gods. After winning the war against the Titans, Zeus named him ruler of the underworld, as well as all things underground. He presided over the invisible kingdom, where the dead go after leaving the world. Poseidon. Poseidon was the god of the seas and horses. He lived in the depths of the sea 
where there is a kingdom of golden palaces. He could be both calm and violent alike, causing great havoc like floods or earthquakes with his trident whenever he was ignored or provoked. Zeus. Zeus was the god of the skies and king of the gods. He led the Olympians to victory against the Titans, presiding over the heavens afterwards. He married his beautiful sister Hera, but was never faithful to her as he fathered many children with many different gods and mortal women alike. Zeus's lustful nature would put him in constant conflict with his powerful wife Hera, and as a result, endanger the lives of his lovers and bastard children. These are the titans of the second generation in Greek mythology. They would in turn bring forth powerful offspring, adding to a greater wealth of history and knowledge that would forever fascinate both the learned and the curious.